Welcome to House Television, the program taken directly from the pages of House Magazine, where we bring you ideas and information on how to add a touch of elegance to your home. On this episode of House Television, the Deck and Patio Company converts this ordinary backyard into a beautiful resort area. Jean Carr Interiors decorates a Pinewood Development model home. Aladdin Remodelers makes a dramatic change in this kitchen. And House Projects with Mike Ehrlich. Hi, welcome to House Television. I'm Erin Crawford. From a ho-hum backyard to an award-winning resort area, Deck and Patio executes this challenge with ease. Well, this uh, project started as a, uh, a backyard pool slash resort area. There was a 12-foot elevation change from the top of the area all the way down to the bottom. And so to get a pool and a patio into a level space was a challenge. And so what we decided to do was work with uh, uh, about five different levels around the swimming pool. And we built our main patio. Uh, and then from there we have patios that actually go up to a swim up spa and patios that go uh, down to the uh, swim up, walk up uh, bar. So one of the things that makes this uh, pool very interesting is that it's actually a vinyl pool. Uh, we had a choice between uh, gunite and vinyl. The uh, client chose a vinyl pool because of its uh, soft touch and feel. Um, significant uh, cost difference between a um, gunite and vinyl pool. The vinyl pool was less expensive. And basically all the features that we could have done in a gunite pool, we can do in a vinyl pool. Technology has changed quite a bit. And uh, now uh, vinyls are a high-tech pool. Um, the pool has a uh, spillover spa that sits about five feet above the swimming pool. Uh, there's a waterfall that cascades into the spa. It's actually a heated waterfall, so hot water goes into the spa while you're in it. And then that spa spills into the swimming pool, so there's uh, multiple uh, waterfalls. Uh, those are two of the five waterfalls that are on the pool. Uh, there's another waterfall that goes into the pool in the center of the pool. And then there's two waterfalls that are outside the pool so that even when the pool is covered in the fall, the homeowner can uh, sit outside and, and still enjoy the gardens and the beauty and uh, see the uh, waterfalls run and, and listen to the uh, sound of that water. Uh, one other nice feature on this pool is that it has a swim up, walk up bar. And so there are four bar stools, and you can swim right up to the bar and, and grab a soda or something to eat. Uh, people who don't want to get wet can walk down to the lower uh, bar patio and uh, be served uh, there as well. So there's four chairs in the uh, walk-up area and four bar stools, so eight people can uh, be served at the, uh, at the bar. Uh, there's some high-tech features on this pool one of which is a GND automation system. Uh, basically, there are five control pads uh, around the pool and in the house. Basically, any function of the swimming pool can be turned on or off from inside the house or, or at poolside. On this pool, we've used uh, Tecoblock Tumble Paving Stones. It's a, um, a concrete paver uh, that's designed to look like stone. Uh, it's been tumbled, and uh, this particular one is a uh, sandalwood color which is tan and grays. We've also included um, some campfires. Now these campfires are kind of unique because they are not wood campfires, they're actually propane. And so uh, basically what it is is a stainless steel burner with fireplace logs. They have a valve. You turn on the valve and light it with a, with a match. Um, the nice thing about them is that you don't have to build a fire. When you're done with them you can simply turn them off. You don't wait, have to wait for it to go out or extinguish it. And uh, when you're sitting around them, especially on a cool evening, as the wind swirls around, you get warm puffs of air. So instead of getting smoke blown in your face, you just get the warm air. And it's got a beautiful flicker, it creates a beautiful ambience, uh, even in the daytime. The entrance to the spa area has uh, some interesting steps that we used. We've found uh, that our clients are uh, liking more natural elements. And so rather than building stairs out of concrete pavers or um, cultured stone or some other materials, uh, we're now using a lot of um, natural boulders to create steps and so we have a beautiful um, uh, set of moss rock steps that go through a garden and up into the uh, spa area. We've also used plant material and large boulders to retain that five foot elevation change. Most of our jobs actually have what we call embedded umbrellas. It's nothing more than a, um, a steel sleeve that gets set into concrete, uh, it, uh, it goes into the patio and then we use a nine foot market umbrella 
Um, we usually do groups of umbrellas because you can get a large bank of shade. This pool is a very unique pool and so we uh, entered it into the uh, Northeast Pool and Spa Association Awards. It won Best in Competition. It was the first time that a vinyl pool in the 21 year history of this competition that a vinyl pool actually uh, won Best in Competition. When we come back, Pinewood Development's beautifully designed model. The importance of interior design is apparent in our daily lives. Producing an environment that's functional and aesthetically pleasing is the ultimate goal. That's why the instructors at the Metropolitan Institute of Interior Design have strived for the past 20 years to create one of the finest interior design schools in the country, with an emphasis on practical training. The Metropolitan Institute can help you achieve your goals too. Call 516-845-4033 or visit met-design.com. Strength, beauty, elegance. Silestone, the leader in quartz surfacing. Silestone, a stone with personality to suit your taste. Think natural, think quartz, think Silestone. Florence Building Materials is pleased to announce our much anticipated expansion with a showroom in Southampton. This life size village is designed to assist builders, architects, designers, and homeowners to visualize their homes or projects. There are hundreds of styles of windows, siding, and roofing, doors, interiors, including millwork and kitchens. The Southampton location joins the Huntington Showroom in providing you a unique home improvement opportunity. Florence Building Materials Southampton Showroom, 1673 North Highway, 631 287 1266. Welcome back. Jean Carr and Carol Giordano of Jean Carr Interiors design a Pinewood development model home to appeal to everyone. Well, we basically came into this project uh, with an established floor plan. And so from that point on, we worked with all of the subcontractors and we had to make every choice from the lighting, placement, whatever the actual fixture was, sinks, faucets. He wanted a metropolitan look, so it's kind of an elegant look. We did mostly brushed nickel, including the hardware. You come into the foyer, there's console and mirror. Basically, in every single room that we did do in the model, we tried to make a focal point. The focal point in the foyer was basically in the entry, you know, sconces with a mirror and a sideboard. The kitchen, we did painted cabinetry with a black and white and red theme because we wanted it to be colorful. We did um, a beautiful, you know, custom backsplash in the kitchen and we did a little something different by the stove area. Sinks were all special ordered and we, we tried to do very high-end special selections. In the dining room, a red wallpaper was applied with gold accents to give this room a warm feel. The same feeling is continued up the stairway with a beautiful mural. What we were doing was keeping this theme going up the stairway to um, where it's hand painted with bamboo and um, all the colors that we use throughout the home. 
probably my favorite thing in the entire house is the painting that was done by a muralist that did the foyer going up the staircase, which is absolutely spectacular. In the living room, we tried to make the basic focal point the fireplace. We have a, a big flat screen TV over the stone fireplace. Everything's pretty subtle in, um, in pattern, but very colorful in um, it, that gives it a punch. We did a star pattern carpet going up the stairs, which is reds and golds. The um, master bedroom, we did a play on checks. It's actually the headboard is upholstered in a bold uh, window pane check. The drapery fabrics are a medium sized check incorporated with a small check. We did actually the master bathroom was uh, done in marble, it's honed marble. So it's a little different. We have a beautiful shower with a, des uh, we designed a panel in the shower and repeated it on the walls. We also had the muralist come in and paint the walls in the master bath to make it a little special, very special. The vanity in the master bedroom is, we, instead of doing a dressing table, we did a marble slab with a beautiful zebra skinned bench. Gives it a little bit of cloud. The boys room is one that was designed for the young and the young at heart. We used an animal print um, wallpaper with a sisal look rug. In the beautiful girls' bedroom, vivid colors were used to brighten the feel of this unique room. Wherever the headboard was, we tried to make it either a special wall color or the headboard something very important or accent it with pillows that added drama to the room. We do hear from people asking us what colors we used because it's just children that come love it. Downstairs in the basement, when you walk in through the garage, there is a beautiful bathroom. And then there, down there, there's a very adequate laundry room that's all decorated. And at the end of the hall is a full-size media room. There's a wonderful uh, media room. Uh, we did that in reds again and golds and sand colors. Uh, we were, uh, the given were red leather chairs because that's what the builder wanted and we worked around him and I think we did a nice job of making that a comfortable, uh, very elaborate media room. I mean, it's the, the sound is fantastic. The home theater was also a focal point where we did these beautiful sconces that had the shape of Oscars with posters, po movie posters. So it's been uh, quite a nice project. We get a lot of compliments from it and it's something that's a little different for this area in Long Island. It was, uh, it was a challenge, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Up next, a new kitchen by Aladdin for an existing waterfront home. Stay tuned. Drive aboard the Port Jeff Ferry. Skip the traffic. Enjoy the sound. Full speed ahead. Cruising steady. Sit, relax in the steamboat lounge. Sail the sound. Cleat Lumber Company, established in 1946, serving the professional builder and remodeler for almost 50 years with leading names like Colby, Integrity, Thermatru, and Owens Corning. We stock everything to keep your job running smoothly, including a team of knowledgeable sales and support people to assist you. Visit our new showroom at 777 Park Avenue in Huntington, call 1-800-696-CLEAT, or visit us online at www.cleat.com.
Thanks for staying with us. The new design of this next kitchen was not just hanging cabinets. It involved removing walls and adding beams. We're here today at the South Shore home of Long Island, where we recently remodeled the home to open up all the spaces so that the, the, the flow of traffic throughout the house was continuous and the spaces opened enough so that the family room, the kitchen, the entranceway uh, has a continuous flow and is ideal for entertaining friends and family. First thing we wanted to consider when we started this project is what were the important parts of the house and what parts of the house were being neglected. Well, they bought the house for the view outside, for the water, we're on the water here in Great South Bay, and for the view outside and to bring the, and to bring the outside in, we had to open up some walls. So we took a wall out in the front of the house so that when you enter the house, you immediately see right through the kitchen, through the great room to the back of the house. We also had to move the bathroom over a little bit because the bathroom would have blocked all of those views. Right? Then we took the wall out between the existing kitchen. The house originally ended right about here and it was a brick wall separating the kitchen from the family room. Well, that made the family room small and the kitchen small. And if you were in the family room and you were in the kitchen, you couldn't converse very well. So we put a major header across here, took that wall out, made the floor one continuous floor to make it look like one great room, which is what it is. And we actually achieved that great room effect. Okay. Then we had to go about the task of putting in a kitchen that followed the basic rule, I think is the most important rule of form follows function. We had to come up with a space that was going to be not only efficient to cook and prepare a meal in, but to entertain in, and hopefully follow the major guide rules given to us by the National Kitchen and Bath Association. So being a certified designer, I said, well, let's make a space where everything can work and people can enjoy the three basic things that life is all about, family, food, and friends. And that's what we did. And now when the person at the stove or at the sink is preparing a meal, they're enjoying a cup of coffee, hopefully a glass of wine with their guests and their friends, and doing what should be done in a kitchen, that is enjoy making a meal. The, uh, we further had to uh, add all of the accoutrements and the appointments to make things work properly. So we have pot drawers and roll out shelves. And because pot drawers actually work a little bit better, it's a single operation. You simply open a drawer, take out the pot, close the drawer. It's one operation, open the drawer. A roll-out shelf gives you one other advantage, and that is that they're adjustable in height. On this side, we have the sink. So if you were standing at the center of the sink, you would have a garbage pail to your right, a recycling center behind that, dishwasher to the left, so one continuous operation. We further made the dishwasher the type of a dishwasher that had a fully concealed panel. In other words, the panel matches the cabinetry perfectly, and it's only when you open that uh, panel, or that cabinet, it opens from the top, the controls are on top. You don't need, people don't even think there's a dishwasher in the kitchen. But you'll also notice as you look around that we have a very symmetrical, very balanced feeling, which leads to a very great comfort level. So this side has the refrigerator with a very balanced arrangement of cabinetry on both sides. This side has another bar area that is perfectly symmetrical with a cabinetry counter space and, and matching cabinetry from the center out. You might also notice that the wall oven has been placed so that when the wall oven is open, it's open to the same level as the countertop for safety reasons. As far as the overall appointments in the kitchen, those are very often left to the homeowner's choice and there are so many choices. I mean, as far as details, You'll notice some of the fluting and rosettes around the cooktop, um, the moldings on top. Simple yet elegant, but the choices are so ample, anyone can, anyone's taste can be uh, accommodated. As far as the space around the stove is concerned, this is something we'll very often do, uh, which is to pull the cooktop out a few inches so that the space behind the cooktop is easy to clean. You'll notice that this, the countertop exceeds the main countertop by about three inches, and that makes it much more comfortable. I think in general, the most rewarding part of a kitchen renovation or a home renovation of any type is when you hear what I was very fortunate to hear from my client. He says, Michael, there is nothing that I would have changed, and there is nothing that you did that I regret in any way whatsoever. 
because I would absolutely change not one little thing. And that planning stage, I think, is really where it's all at. When you plan a job properly and you have all the I's dotted, all the T's crossed, that job is going to be a pleasure going in and an even greater pleasure for the future. Coming up next, House Projects with Mike Ehrlich. From the North Shore to the East End, House Magazine captures a mix that has made the publication a success for a quarter of a century. House Magazine, with over 200 pages, is loaded with ideas and information on how to make your own home a castle. The latest issue of House Magazine is on newsstands now. Take a look at how Long Island architects and designers create settings for an elegant style of living. Buy House Magazine on newsstands all over Long Island. To charge your subscription, call us at 631-288-5400. National award-winning networking magazine, the who's who and what's what for enterprising executives since 1991 is the choice for business professionals. With a pass-along readership of over 50,000, networking provides executives with information they've come to depend on every month. Get inside the loop and give yourself the networking edge for advertising subscriptions and event coverage. Call 631-288-1586 or visit our website at www.networkwomen.com. Now, Mike Ehrlich shows us how to replace a window on this week's House Projects. Today, we're going to replace an old window with a newer low E window. And along the way, we're going to increase the thickness of this wall, which was framed with standard 2x4s, by, by padding it with some lumber ripped to the thickness of a 2x6. So I think we can get started. We're outside, getting ready to take off the trim for the window. It's called the casing. Once that comes off, we're gonna go back inside with the sawzall and cut any fasteners that are securing the window to the wall studs. As usual, safety first. Okay, the, the window appears not to be nailed anywhere on the sides, which is sometimes the case with an older window. And basically the casing is what was holding it into the house, which is how newer windows mount. So I'm going to disconnect this extension cord so I don't have any accidents, and I'm going to wiggle this window right out of the hole. Because we're going to relocate the new window in a little bit different spot than the old window, we're going to pull some of these nails out of the wall so I don't ruin my saw blade when I cut the new opening. The other thing is we're going to reframe the window on the inside with the studs I showed you and we're going to make the new spot. So I'll get started pulling some of these nails. Now that all the nails are out of the fascia, We've already marked where the window's gonna go. We're gonna cut back the tar paper and then we'll saw through the sheathing with a circular saw. We cut across the bottom of the sheathing to put the new window in, but because we ended right on the stud, I'm gonna cut this stud out right now 
and that'll give me less resistance when I run the circular saw from the outside. Okay, we're measuring right now for new uh, studs and jack studs for the window to hold the header. And we're gonna use two by sixes instead of the rip down lumber, instead of adding to a two by four. This will ensure uh, structural integrity. We've cut these two two by six pieces of timber to serve as a header. This goes between the jams on the sides of the window and we're gonna gang nail them together now. That keeps any top load from collapsing the window or pinching it so it won't open. The jack studs are cut. We got the header dry fitted before we nail it. And what we'll do is put the header tight to the sheathing and we'll go ahead and pad the front side of the header back up to the old face of the 2x4 wall, inner wall. Let's work on the sill plate now. This is what the window will be resting on once it's in place. And again, it's going to be on what they call jack studs. It's going to be a piece of wood sisted alongside this jack stud to hold the sill plate up and keep the deflection from dropping. We finished cutting the jack studs and we got the sill plate in place for the window. We've dry fit the window. It's completely framed out. We've repaired the sheathing. And the last step before installing the window in its final destination is to put in what's called a weather shield. This is basically a water barrier which goes on the bottom of the sill and wraps to the front of the sheathing. And then you wrap the sides on either side, nothing on top. You don't want to trap any water up top. So we're going to cut this in now. Peel the back. 